The thoughts that you call your thoughts are not your thoughts. They are the mind, not your mind, the mind. I know this sounds simplistic, but if you can start to identify that thoughts don't hurt you, it's the thoughts that are stressful that you believe that hurt you. It's no surprise that so many people today have a great deal of uncertainty about where life, the world, the economy is going. Uh, we're going through massive changes, and some of them are unprecedented. We haven't seen for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. And yet at the same time, we inherently know that with all this change, there's opportunity, that there's a chance for our lives to be better than they've ever been, that transformations that are happening in science and technology can truly change the quality of our lives, the length of our lives, the way we experience life. And yet, day to day, most people live, I think, with a great deal of foreboding, a, a great deal of uncertainty. And so I thought it might be nice to just drop in for a couple of minutes and give you a couple of triggers to remind you what I know you know in your heart. And that is we are not made to survive, we're made to thrive. Human beings, our spirit, our capacity to adapt, our ability to grow, our ability to learn with lightning-like speed, our ability to find a way to serve others, that calling inside of us that we have as a parent or as a friend or someone who truly cares when we put our fear aside because there's something we want to serve greater than ourselves, we all have that ability to find that passion in our life. Because we're always looking back, reliving the negative, we end up carrying around all this baggage that weighs us down. One of the best things we can learn to do is drop it, let it go. Whether it happened 20 years ago or 20 minutes ago, don't carry negative baggage from yesterday into today. You won't live a victorious life if you're always reliving what didn't work out, who hurt you, the mistakes you've made. The reason it's called the past is because it's over. It's done, it's history. Now do your part and let it go. I'm gonna to talk to you about just the simple core of what you and I are made for. We are not made to survive. We're not made to manage our pain or get through it. We're made to be creators of our lives. We can create anything, anything we can dream about, we can create. And I know that sounds like positive thinking, you know, just BS. But in your soul, there have been times in your life, I know, when you've had something that you wanted so much. Maybe you wanted something for someone you care about. Maybe you wanted something for yourself. But you became so obsessed with something, achieving it, experiencing it, whether it was a transformation, you know, in yourself, a change in your business, you know, making a certain amount of money, getting a job, you know, increase at some position, increase. Uh, maybe it was doing something for your mom or your dad or your kids. Somewhere in your life, you've gotten obsessed enough to really want to create something that you may not even know how you were going to do it, but you just wanted it, desired it, that you started all of a sudden taking action and you got insights. And before you knew it, what used to be just this impossible dream became a reality. Is it fair to say that at some stage in your life that there are some things today in your life that were once just a dream or a goal, that once seemed difficult or impossible, whether it be the job you have or the relationship you're in and might be taking for granted? Is, it, is there anything in your life today that was once like that? Well, then you and I are creators. And very often when we get overwhelmed by so many things that we feel out of control by, we start getting into being managers of our life, managing our pain, managing through the situation. So every day you have to sell yourself and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you've got to sell yourself on that it's possible. But you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. Every day, you've got to begin to recondition your mind. So my purpose here is to say, what does it take to thrive once again? The key to thriving is you've got to allow yourself to be able to take advantage of uncertainty. Yes, the world is uncertain right now. Uncertainty is change. Change is life. We both know that. We all know that. But if you and I are going to become masters, we have to understand that we don't have to work on change. Change is automatic. Progress is not. If you and I are going to make progress, whatever stage of the year you're looking at this, progress comes when you tell yourself the truth and you're able to feel the uncertainty and take action anyway. Here's an important point. Nothing works the first time. When you try something new, it probably won't work. When you try something new several times, it probably won't work. And the turning point in my life came when I would hear good ideas and I was so eager to be successful in selling, I would run out and try the ideas and they wouldn't work. I'd try a way of getting an appointment or over answering an objection or closing a sale, it wouldn't work. And my natural response, ah, and I think I should be disappointed. And then I realized nothing works, at least the first few times. 
So I decided I would try a new idea five or ten times before I passed judgment on it. I would not just try it once and quit like most people do, and that changed my whole life. It was a turning point in my life because I realized from then on if you've got a good idea and you've got a good goal and you want to double your income and improve the quality of your life and you have to try new things in order to get new results, it's not going to work the first time. So you say, well, that didn't work. Try something else and try something else and try something else. Now, if you try, only two things can happen. What are they? Succeed or fail. If you succeed, you do more of it. If you fail, you learn from it, get smarter and try it again. So you cannot lose by taking action. You can only lose by not taking action. The thing that stops us all is fear. It's no surprise. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown, fear of not looking good. And that fear we could translate into the simple thing of uncertainty. Now when you look at someone who's incredibly successful, you look at someone who's truly a leader in their life or in their field, the one thing they have in common is they exude this sense of certainty. And where does that come from? Is it inborn? Are they lucky? Are things just going their way? No, great leaders know how to step in the uncertainty and bring the certainty to the situation. Most people in life, we really feel like the level of stress in our life comes to how much of life do you feel like you control or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? It's very easy to have those events start to take control unless we take control of what's between our ears, our own mind. You see, what you and I focus on massively affects how we feel, whether we're thriving or surviving. If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. It won't even matter if you're you know, taking antidepressants. If you keep focusing on what you can't control, what's missing from your life, you're going to feel depressed still. You can take as many antidepressants as you want. Focus equals power. We've got to change ourselves. We've got to build a new image, a picture in our mind. We've got to see ourselves the way we want to be, and then we have to live with it. That's you go to the gym workout, that's what you do. You build a picture of how you want to see this arm, this arm, and you build that picture, and then you build the body. Well, you build the life in your mind. Take your pen and write out how you want to live, and always start by writing, I'm so happy and grateful, now that. And the second you write it, you've got it intellectually. The moment you impress it upon your emotional mind, you've got it emotionally. And it's only a period of time till it manifests on the physical plane. Yeah. Spirit works from a higher to a lower potential. If you want to thrive, you got to focus on what you can control. you got to focus on the difference you can make. you got to focus on what's already in your life that you're grateful for. And I have a little process here at the end that's my gift to you, which is just a simple ritual that can bring you back to this place. So one thing that leaders do is they focus on the things they want, they focus on what they can control, they focus on what they have. They have a combination of gratitude, strength, and commitment. They really unleash the second element. They have a vision. They have something that they're after, something they want to create, something they want to contribute, something they want to give, something they want to make happen. And that's when you become a creator again instead of a manager of life. And it's easy to lose that sense of vision in your life through disappointments. Hey, we've all had them. You get all excited about something and then, you know, life seems to crush it. Somebody betrays you. You betray yourself. You don't follow through and then you don't trust yourself at the same level. What makes somebody a leader is they build this certainty and not only with focus, not only do they get a vision for what they want, but they bring that certainty in their body. Because the infinite player understands sometimes you're ahead and sometimes you're behind. Sometimes your product is better and sometimes it's worse. The goal isn't to be the best every day. The goal isn't to, out, to outdo your competition every day. That's a finite construction. Finite players play to, be be to beat the people around them. Infinite players play to be better than themselves. To wake up every single day and say, how can we make our company a better version of itself today than it was yesterday? How can we create a product this week that's better than the product we created last week? We also have to play the infinite game. It's not about being ranked number one. It's not about having more followers on Twitter than your friends. It's not about outdoing anyone. It's about how to outdo yourself. It's about how to make sure that the work that you're producing is better than the work you produced before. You are your competition. And that is what ensures you stay in the game the longest. And that is what ensures you find joy. Because the joy comes not from comparison, but from advancement. Listen, if you've ever been to one of my live events, you know that one of the greatest things about, let's say, Unleash the Power Within, is you go through a weekend where you literally train your nervous system to have certainty. I mean, how the heck do we get people to storm through fire? It's not about fire walking. 
It's about getting yourself to be able to take action in the areas of your life that normally you would more than hold back, where your brain would take over and say, I can't do this, are you crazy? Somebody else did it, but not me. What we do is get people in a state where you're gonna follow through, where you're gonna face your fear and do it anyway. And the way we do that, besides changing people's focus, showing you how to direct and control that focus, is also by learning how to use your body as the tool to change your state.